Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to see how to use um, CI-CD pipelines to deploy MPLS traffic engineering in an existing um, MPLS network. So over here, you can see that I have my core um, devices, which is R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6. So the traffic engineering um, head and tunnel will start from um, R1 and the tail will be at um, R6 and vice versa because we need to make sure that um, traffic from uh, each PE is going to traverse over a defined path by the tunnels. So in the first part of the video, we are just going to check our basic MPLS setup and check for connectivity and also check for tree shroud to see where the traffic is passing. So I'll bring up my terminal and um, this is my terminal. And I'll go to R1, which is which is going to be the head end tunnel for this particular region. So um, let me go back to R1 and let's see the routes that we are receiving. So show show IP route. So show R okay. So R1 is actually Okay, as I said, it's the head end tunnel. So what we need to do is that we need to do show IP VRF. So we need to see the VRFs on the P router. Then we can type show IP route VRF A1. So these are the routes that we are receiving for VRF A1. So let's check for B1. And as you can see, we are also receiving routes from um, VRF B1. So now we can confirm that um, our routes exchange is working between um, the two sites. So we have um, this particular region where R1 is the PE, and then we have this particular region where R6 is also the PE. So we're going to test connectivity between R7 and R8, and also check the trace route to see where the traffic will pass. So let's go back to our terminal and let's go to R7. And then we can issue show IP route. And as you can see, we are receiving um, the prefix over here. So let me just type pink 192.168.254.8. That is the prefix we are receiving from R8 through BGP over the MPLS network. So um, I need to I need to source it. Other than that, it's not going to work. To so source, let's say loopback zero because the IP address is configured on loopback zero. And as you can see, we can ping um, the IP address from R8. So let's do a trace route. So trace route to 192.168.254.8, sourcing from the loopback zero, source from loopback, loopback zero, and I'll use the numeric. So this is a path that is um, going through. So it's going through um, 10.1.2.2, that's supposed to be from R1 to R2, and from R2, let's see where it's going to pass. Obviously, it's going through 10.2.3, so 10.2.3, that means it's going through here. And uh, we have 10.3.5, 10.3.5, and then this path. So basically, traffic is going over R2 to R3 to R5 and R6. So basically, it's going, it's, traffic is being forwarded based on the OSPF um, cost. So the cost between these interfaces over the R3 is relatively lower compared to the cost going over the router down here, that is R4. So now let's check for R9 to R10 and let's see where the traffic will pass. So this is R9. And I saw type show IP route. To show IP route, in R9 is telling us that uh, we are receiving the dot 10 prefix 
over BGP through the MPLS network so we can test connectivity. Sorry. As you can see, we have connectivity. So once again, we're going to do a trace route to see the path for the traffic. Source, loopback zero, numeric. And as you can see, the traffic from R9 over here, they're all using the path over here down to R5 through R3. So that means that uh, we are basically using um, <coughs> the OSPF. No, back, so back on R1, we can um, type show IP route to see how to get to the loop back of R6. And it's telling us that we need to go through um, 10.1.2, which is R2. So we can also do the same for here. So show IP route and how to get to R6. We need to go through R3 and then down to R5. So this completes the second part of the video. And the next part of the video, we are going to see how I designed the pipelines. I'm not going to go much into details because of, I've made um, the code and everything available on my Gitbook repo. So you can check the link in the description to check. Okay, so in the next part of the video, I'm going to run you through the CI CD pipeline that I created for this particular task. So first of all, I defined two stages, connectivity and deployment. So for connectivity, basically, we are just going to make sure that uh, we have SSH connection to our devices. And then the deployment part is where we actually deploy the configurations as a code to our network devices. And here's the next part here is just a, a template, okay? It's a template and I'm using this tag to reference um, the GitLab runner, which is installed directly in my infrastructure, which allows me to talk to my devices. So um, the configuration basically uh, allows me to segment, or let's say have a separate execution plane and a control plane. Okay, so I have the control plane in my pipeline file, which will be pushed to GitLab. And then the execution plane is currently in my infrastructure, as you see over here. So it's a server that has access connectivity to all these nodes in my topology. So um, basically, the next one is a script. So sometimes I got to realize that um, when, you, when I run the GitLab runner from my control node, um, the source file or let's say the source path, sometimes it, it, it's not able to pick it. So I need to actually make sure that uh, before the pipeline executes, these um, configurations are, or let's say this path are exported. So basically the first one, we are just going to temporarily add a path to, or let's say temporarily export the path. And then the next one, we are going to persist. Um, the path whenever the shell starts, or let's say whenever we are executing um, the pipeline, which is going to trigger, or let's say run on the GitLab runner, which is in our infrastructure. And then the next one, we are going to just make sure that uh, we apply the changes to the current session without needing to restart the shell. So basically, the first, um, stage is the availability and it's going to reference this particular template the template is the template has been bind to the execution environment which is the server where i have my GitLab runner installed so the first one is the connectivity and it's going to execute this ansible playbook which is basically going to check for ssh connectivity to the devices. And I'm using Ansible rows to make it more readable and understandable. And that's um, the best practice to use Ansible when it comes to large scale deployment 
So this is basically the script is going to check for SSH. And once again, I have all these explained in my Git book. So I'll leave the comments in the, I'll leave the link in my description as well. So it's just going to check and we will go through all this when the pipeline executes. And the next part is um, we are going to enable T globally. So um, actually this is a mistake. So let me just copy this. Other than that, the pipeline will fail because I don't have this stage or let's say this job defined. So I'll just paste this. So basically it's going to only execute when um, this job has completed and it's successful. So it, it's also going to execute a playbook in a different in a different um, stage, which is the deployment stage as well as this. So the next stage is to actually, let me see, deployment. So this one is, is just going to enable T globally on the core devices, MPLS traffic engineering tunnels to enable, that's the simplest command you can ever execute, to enable T globally on uh, a device. And the next thing is going to enable T in the IGP, which is very important. We need to en enable um, MPLS traffic engineering in the IGP, be it OSPF or ISIS. So once again, it's also going to execute um, a playbook from um, the rules. And the next one is to enable RSVP on core. So we need to enable um, resource reservation protocol on the core devices that's going to or let's say the core interfaces that's in the IGP, which is going to take part in the traffic engineering process. And it's very important. So once again, the next thing is to enable MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. So this is also very important. Um, so let's say this is going to also enable MPLS T tunnels and I think uh, we can check this configuration, which is uh, T. As you can see, this is the configuration that it's going to do. It's going to reference from a text file to do the configuration, the explicit path. So for example, if we check on R1, explicit path, you can see the path that you have defined for the traffic engineering tunnel to um, for it traffic through, or let's say, direct the flow of traffic based on the path that we, def we have defined. So it's very important. So we, all ha we also have um, a lot of the configurations here. So I have all this explained in my Git book as well, so not, not to waste too much. The last one will be enabling the, v enabling the VRF for the loopback. So in um, MPLST VRF2P, we'd have to enable um, loopbacks that will forward um, traffic for every particularly say every VRF, and then you need to advertise these loopbacks into the core OSPF so that, um, you know, any, you know, in MPLS, um, destinations are always based on the loopback addresses. So that, so once labels are allocated to that particular prefix, or let's say the loopback, um, to know where to for the traffic to. So without wasting much time, I'm going to bring up my Git desktop. So I have my Git desktop here. So what I'm going to do is that um, I'm just going to commit it. I made, I made some changes. Previously, I was testing something, but I had to change it. So let me just put a comment. Let's say production ready. And I'm going to click on commit. So once I hit commit, it's going to push to the GitHub repo and the pipeline is going to start automatically. So I will click on commit to main then I'll push it. So I'll bring my GitLab here. So if everything is okay, we should be good to go to push the Okay, so now the pipeline has triggered. Let's go and see what is happening. 
So you see a lot of dependencies, as I told you there. Device availability need to pass before we can deploy um, the various features of the MPLST Thanos. And as you can see, once this one checks out, the remaining ones will continue. And they depend on each other before um, they can execute. So there's a, there's a dependency. So when I go to, let's say, job dependencies, show dependencies, you can see clearly the relationship between every job in the pipeline. <laughs> so the first task is still running. With all luck, everything should go through. So we can click on it to see what is actually happening. So it's executing. So let's see the feedback that we will get from this particular job. Okay. So as you can see, <clears throat> sorry. So as you can see, now we have SSH enabled on all these devices. So we are good to go. The pipeline didn't fail. So we can as well go back and see the graph or let's say the dependencies. So let me see the stages. So this is this went through. And as you can see, now the next job to execute is that we are enabling T globally. So we are enabling traffic engineering globally on the devices. And as I told you, there's a lot of dependencies. So all these dependencies need to, in order for them to work, the dependency should check out. So when I say check out, I mean that the job should be successfully executed by the pipeline. Okay, so we are still waiting for traffic engineering to be enabled globally. And as you can see, that one too checks out. And the next job to execute is uh, enabling T in the IGP. As I said, it can be OSPF, it can be ISIS. So let's see if that one too will check, check out. Then uh, we check on our devices. I'm not going to pause. Um, this session, I just want you to witness whatever is going on so that you see the relevance, the relevance and the importance, or let's say, how you can use um, DevOps principles as a network engineer to streamline some of these things. Okay. So for the configuration, you can have your IP team. And as you can see, enabling T in IGP also checked out. So the next thing is to enable RSVP on the core. So as I was saying, the DevOps um, tool set can help you um, as a network engineer to streamline things. So you have the IP guys, or let's say the traditional IP guys, design the configuration for you. And it's your job as the DevNet engineer, or let's say the DevOps engineer, to pick this um, CLI-based configuration and push it to the devices through code in a more fashionable way, or let's say, or in a more collaborative way. And if there's anything, you can just revert the configurations and then everything will go back. So we are still waiting for our pipeline to complete. And then we will check the configuration on our routers just to make sure that MPLS traffic engineering is up. And then we are going to do a trace to confirm that um, the path defined is working. So when everything is done and then with all luck, traffic from R7 should use uh, R2, R3, R5 path to hit R8. And then, then traffic from R9 should go to R1 to R2 to use the lower path, R4, R5, R6. So let's wait for the RSVP to be enabled on the core. So as we wait, we can as well verify. And as you can see, there's a lot of connections going to the devices. Okay. So let's say, let's go to R1. 
So we can just type show. And as you can see, enabling RSVP on the core has been executed successfully. Show run pipe section OSPF. And as you can see, we have MPLS, traffic engineering enabled globally. So we can as well check for RSVP. So show run pipe section RSVP. As you can see, this has been enabled on the interface. So we can as well check show run interface. So um, and as you can see, the tunnels are coming up. Can you see the tunnels are coming up? The tunnels are coming up. Can you see? So let's show MPLS traffic. Traffic engineering tunnels. And as you can see, T has been enabled on all the tunnels. Now it's enabling the forwarding loopbacks. And when it's done, we will check that in the BGP config for the MPLS or the VRF. And as you can see, we have one tunnel, it's signaled to be up, and the destination is R6. So let me show it. Okay. So back to, and as you can see, you see the explicit path that is supposed to drive the traffic through the tunnel to R6 over here. And as you can see, the tunnel is up, admin up, operational status is up, the path is valid, valid, and the signaling is connected. So that means that the RSVP has signaled the path from R1 to R6 and it's up. The same applies to tunnel one, which is going to R6 for the traffic from um, R9 to R10. So now we are good. And as you can see, everything passed, production ready. We have MPLST enabled, or let's say traffic engineering enabled in the MPLS network. And as you can see, everything checked out, okay? So um, the next part is for me to do the trace again to see where the traffic is passing, starting from um, is it R7, R7. So let's do the trace on R7 again. And as you can see, R7 maintained its path, nothing changed. It's the same thing, R7 didn't change its, its path. Now let's check on R9 to see if R9 is changing its path based on the MPLS traffic engineering. And of course, R9 going to R10 has changed its path compared to the previous path, okay? As you can see, the labels are different, 300 is for R3, then R5. And as you can see, now it's going through R4 to R5. And as you can see, the MPLST has been successfully enabled, or let's say, yes, enabled in our core network. Now traffic is transfer traversing to the backbone network based on the T tunnels and the explicit path that we defined. And the next thing to check to conclude my video is that we can go ahead and go through the pipelines to see what was done at each stage. So let me start from here. And as you can see, it, and as you can see, it gives you a log of whatever happened, whatever command was executed on the devices. So, and I'm sure we are all network engineers, we understand some of these commands. And these are commands that you type in the CLI of the device. The next thing is to enable T globally. As well, we have the locks from Ansible, the commands it's executed, the before and after changes made to each device respectively. The next thing was to enable RSVP on the core interfaces in the IGP. And as you can see over here, we enabled IP RSVP on the various interfaces in the core network. And then we as well enable the um, MPLS T tunnels. As you can see, so the T tunnels is just going to um, steer traffic. So this is the explicit path that we defined. And then we also have the VRF for the loopbacks. So these loopbacks are very important because you need them in the VRF configuration so that 
traffic so that it can be advertised into OSPF and then OSPF will send it to um, the PEs and then we can forward traffic com from um, every VRF to a specific loopback interface. So basically, that's how to go about it. And once I said, we have, um, I have the documentation for this particular project available on my GitHub, which I'll leave the link in the description. So I think the last thing I promised to show you guys is how this configuration takes effect. So let me show you. So let's go to R1 and let's say show run. As you can see, so the BGP next stop is loopback one, which is advertising to OSPF and then to um, the various VRF so that each VRF is aware of the loopback is to, to be using to forward its traffic to the other destination. So basically this is um, how to how to use um, Git or let's say DevOps um, principles to deploy configurations into um, our core network infrastructure. And before we do some of these things, it goes through rigorous um, testing, validation, just to make sure that once the code is pushed into production environment, it doesn't cause um, any harm to the network. So this was just for MPLST. And I think uh, in my future videos, you are going to see how to actually use um, move. You're going to see how to move from, well, let's say migrate from MPLS to segment routing. I think it's been a while and um, it's almost 30 minutes. I needed to explain this video um, in detail, but then uh, if I'm going to explain in detail, actually it's going to take some time. So I had to take my time, like 30 minutes to explain everything in in the summary for you to understand how it works everything is possible with code so um, thank you for watching this video and see you in my next video